question. I have to do an experiment for you, or I'm doing an experiment for you today. And this is the place in my apartment with the best light. So please bear with me. I apologize for the mess, but I live here. Life is messy. So before we get started, let's look at our guiding questions for the week. So far, our questions are, what are variables? And how do variables change the outcome of our experiment? Now we know that variables are each individual piece of our experiment. Now they can affect our experiment by acting differently. So when we conduct experiments, we need to make sure that we only control one variable at a time. Or I'm sorry, we only measure one variable at a time. If we aren't careful about how we conduct experiments, then we can end up getting into trouble, but also our experiments aren't valid. They won't come out the way we want them to, and they won't give us proper information for what we are measuring in our experiment. Now, I want to show you a few things. Today, we are going to begin tracking our information in our experiment. I know this is backwards for you. I promise to post a picture of it so you can see what it says when I'm done filling it out. Okay, I will post a picture of whatever we do so that you can see what we've completed and it's, so it's not backwards for you. Okay, so this is how we're going to track our information for our experiment. We have pendulums each of 12, 20, 36, and 52 centimeters in length. Now that measurement, those measurements are in the metric system because that's how many other places, many other countries take their measurements. And that's how we are going to use our experimental measurements for this um, problem this experiment also okay so here we have on our graph length of the swinger which is the pendulum and then we have the number of swings in 15 seconds now for this particular experiment we have many many controlling factors pay attention as I talk through these because this is your assignment today I'm posting an assignment and not a discussion but I want you to be able to tell me the different variables in this experiment. Okay, so we have the swinger, the pendulum. If I say pendulum or swinger, this is what I'm talking about, okay? So we have the pendulum or the swinger, the number of cycles it rotates, the amount of time we're paying attention to, and then there's always the human error and how many people are keeping track of things. Okay, now for this experiment, it's both good and bad that I am the one doing everything for this experiment. It's bad because there are a lot of things going on and I might miss something. Okay, so there's your hum human error. But it's also good because I'm the only one to blame if something goes wrong, but also it helps to keep things consistent if one person is doing things the same way. Okay, so I will be the record keeper and I'm recording the number of swings for our swingers. Here I have 12, 20, 36, and 52 centimeters written down, and then here because this part of the column says length, this one says number of swings, and then I have it set up for trial one. When we're doing experiments, we always want to do more than one trial so that we can get an accurate reading of how our experiment should have gone. Okay, now for our setup, I have a pen taped to the counter here. And that's where I'm going to suspend our pendulum from. When I count the number of swings, I'm going to count from where I drop it, again, level with the countertop, and then it's going to swing to the side and come back. 
That's one swing. So when I count, you'll hear me count when it comes back over here. Okay. Now again, we're keeping track for 15 seconds. Thankfully, I don't have to watch a clock because I've set a timer on my watch to help us pay attention to the time. So I don't have to watch that and the swinger. I can just watch the swinger and listen or feel when my watch goes off. When our 15 seconds are up. Okay, are you ready? Okay. Starting the timer right when I let go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18 rotations, and our timer is up. I push stop. I'm recording on my sheet that we have 18 rotations, and I tested the 20 centimeter pendulum for this round. Okay, so every time, so if I were to conduct that same experiment again, I should get a round. 18 rotations again. Okay, now we'll repeat this for all of the other pendulums also, and then we'll compare the number of swings. I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to stop here. So in your um, assignment, I would like you to tell me what you think will happen with the different pendulum lengths, as well as to tell me what variables are present in our experiment. Okay? Thank you for joining me. I hope you were able to see what was happening, and I can't wait to continue this with you again later. Have a good day, everyone.